Hello, Miss Cindy. Hello, everyone. This is your regularly scheduled program. It's just a different host today. We will see how it goes. Um, yes, I am Pastor Aaron Fanker, Dean of Theology for Higher Things, and I am in the safest bunker from the hurricane possible because my bunker... My Bible study room is in Kansas. Pastor Borkhart, well, he's fine. I just texted him. He's doing okay. Uh, they just don't have power. So he is unable to lead Bible study. So it's me. You get me, the Dean of Theology. So we will see what we can come up with today. Um, I've been out and about doing pastoral things today. So we will see what sort of trouble we can get in. Uh, some gospel trouble, law gospel trouble today. Um, just want to make mention again of the uh, Higher Things Confirmation Curriculum that will be coming out soon. Well, we'll start coming out. We're, we will uh, release a chunk at the beginning and then we will be releasing kind of week to week after that. Uh, very excited. Confirmation 1.0 to help uh, facilitate pastors and equip them and equip um, lay teachers if that if that needs to if that's your situation uh, to help bring confirmation in these strange times of of maybe in person or partially in person or not in person at all or maybe shifting at some point through this year we're kind of offering uh, confirmation 1.0 free resource um, check out um, higher things dot org uh oh Somebody will have to, maybe Miss Cindy can help me out with the link. She can post the link in the, uh, in the comments. I'm blanking on what it is. It's not, it's confirmation something. Or is it just confirmation? I can't remember which one it is. I'm blanking on it now. It's one of those days. It's one of those days. So we are, um, in Genesis 43 is what I was told, uh, where to pick up. Um... No, Maggie, I think he is going to get his favorite line. Maybe. Um, well, actually, no, I might get it. I don't know. We'll see how far I get. Uh, so we are in 43. Let me pull up the text here. Let's go here. Um, now, the famine was severe in the land. So... Uh, it still is severe in the land. Um, so they already had to, <clears throat> excuse me, go get food because they didn't have any. So we know that. So it's still bad. Uh, and when they had um, finished eating uh, all the grain which they brought from Egypt, um, their father said to them, uh, go uh, buy grain for us. Uh, buy... Uh, for a little food, buy us a little food, sure. Return, go buy us some food. But Judah said, now this is important. So things, um, this is an important shift in, in what is uh, kind of called the Joseph narratives. And the Joseph narratives pick up, you know, with Joseph when he, when he gets the special coat and it's through the end of the book. And there's two, key figures in the Joseph narratives, Joseph and Judah. And before this, Judah, not so good. Not, mm, yeah, Pastor Borgen had lots of fun with that text. We, we uh, Judah, not so good um, with Tamar. And yeah, definitely very not good. Um, icky and just all terrible. It was just terrible. And we've already had um, Reuben speak up. Um, but here Judah does. 
And we'll get more on what Judah's going to do. Um, but it's very important. So this is a, a big shift. So Judah has moved. He's moving into center stage here for a moment, um, which, is, which is very important, as we will see. So what does Judah say? Um, the man solemnly, he warned, warned, he warned, warned us. Um, do not, uh, you will not see my face unless your brother is with you. If you will send our brother, uh, we will go down, um, and buy food for you. But if you will not send him, we will not go down. For the man said to us, you shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. So Judah, they've already had this conversation once. And Israel, Jacob, d doesn't want to send them. He basically just leaves Simeon to die. That, that was pretty much what, we, what you would have encountered in 42. So can we just go back? And he's like, no. No, my son, I've lost, I've lost Joseph and I'm not going to lose this other son. And oh, you know, by the way, Simeon's basically gone. He's gone. We'll never see him again. Um, so Judah, I mean, not Judah, Jacob, Israel, um, definitely playing favorites again with his, with his sons. So now Benjamin seems to be, well, he's the youngest. He's the baby. Um, I mean, a good long, it, there's a big age gap between um, Simeon and Benjamin. Um, and so, I mean, 12 son, I mean, it's probably 20, 20 plus years age gap would be if you wanted to go, you know, two to three years, um, in between s births. So, I mean, it's a 20 to 30 year age gap at least, um, depending how you want to do it. Um, but yeah, Simeon, uh, he's lost, gone forever. I mean, Okay, good job, Jacob. Oof. Um, but Judah's pressing the issue because, you know, they need food. Um, and Israel here, um, well, he's still just, it's all about, it's all about Jacob. It's all about Israel. Um, Israel said, why, um, why have you, why have you caused evil for me? So it's, it, yeah, have, why have you done evil for me? Not treat badly. You've, you've done evil to me. You've sinned against me, basically. Uh, to, to tell the man, to preach to the man that there was, that you had another brother. Okay, so you, you've sinned against me by doing this. And they reply, like all of the sons. So everybody rallies to Judah. So um, Judah tells them all this stuff. And then he, he blames all of them. You know, why did you all treat me? So why'd you sin against me? Do this evil to me. And then they all rally to, to Judah's defense. They rally around Judah. Here again, we're, we're echoing um, what's going to come later with the kings. The kings do come from Judah, except for the time with Saul because it comes from Benjamin. But here the, 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 the tribes are rallying around Judah in order to do something first time that that happens before that it's sort of the sons are doing their own thing they're not united in one in any way uh so they say the the man questioned questioned us um to make known um to learn about us um and to learn about our our kin um, saying, is your father still alive? Um, do you have another brother? What, what we told him was an answer to these questions. Could we in any way know that he would say, bring your brother down? So it's like, we were being questioned. Um, don't you remember the fact that he locked us up? Um, how are we supposed to know what he was going to say? Um... And here Jude again speaks up as the, 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 the one voice among many. So Judah first speaks, then they all speak, and now Judah speaks again um, as the leader among men here. 
Judah speaks to his father, um, send the boy with me and we will arise and we will go um, so that we will live and we will not die. Uh, both we and uh, also our little ones. Yes. We and you, sorry. That is there, isn't it? So he lists them off. So here again, he entreats his father. He is the one leading this charge. He's taking the bull by the horns here. Because, I mean, we got to go back. We don't want to die. And here it, here it is. Um, I myself will pledge his safety. Okay. From my hand, you shall require him. If I do not bring him back to you and uh, cause him to be before your face. And I, um, and I, uh, I have, will have sinned against you for all time, for all days. Okay. So this is the big one. Judah isn't just trying to lead them in a way. And he's not like Reuben. Reuben, oh my goodness. I mean, can... Here, it's, why don't you just kill my sons if I don't bring them back? What? What? Who does that? That's awful. But Judah, Judah is, well, he is the 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 one who's going to give his life in the place of um, Benjamin. And he emphasizes it. Um, um, so this is, this is just a little, he's emphasizing that he is the one. So it just sort of rolls off, you know, the emphasis is kind of lost in, in the, in the English, but it's, I myself, I am the one, look at me. I'm the pledge of safety. You'll require it for his life from my hand if I don't bring him back and make him stand in your face. Then he will bear the blame. So it's the it's the word for sin. Then I I will be counted as sinning against you um, all days. So all the days of what? Um, basically, my life is what is what Judah's saying. Count me as a sinner against you forever. Um, it's not really forever. It's like all the, all the days. So all the days of Judah's life um, or, or Jacob's life. So this is a big deal. Um, that he, he's putting his life on the line. Not the life of his sons. He's not, he's already kind of done that before. Um, so, and he's already accustomed to reaping the consequences for his actions. And now he's willing to reap the consequences of other people's actions. Um, but we're not quite there yet in the story. We're getting close. Um, for if we had not delayed, we would have returned to you twice. <coughs> um, so, um, yeah. We've, we've delayed so long, we could have made two trips. Um, so what does Israel say? Uh, Israel says to them, uh, their father, if it has to be this way, uh, then do this. Take some choice fruits of the land in your bags and uh, carry a present down to the man. An offering. Not just a present, an offering. Um, I think that's that word. There's too many things popping up. Yeah, it's an offering. So you're going to buy them off. That's what's going on here. An offering, um, a balm, and a little honey, gum, myrrh, pistachio nuts, and almonds. Okay. Kind of greasing the palms here. Um... Um, take um, double 
the money in your hands, carry back with you the money that was returned in the mouth of your sacks. Uh, perhaps it was an oversight. Perhaps it was a mistake. Okay. So here Jacob's like, well, maybe we can buy the guy off. He seems like a hard man, but I mean, with the right kind of money, with the right kind of gift, maybe he'll he'll soften up. Maybe he'll be nice. Take also your brother and arise, go again to the man. Okay, may, may God Almighty grant you mercy before the man. And uh, send back your older brother and Benjamin. He doesn't even name Simeon. Ouch. Cold. Oof. As for me, if I am bereaved of my children, I'm bereaved. So, I guess that's what's going on. If I'm going to lose my kids, I guess that's the way it's going to be. Okay. Um, so, here again, we see this, this favoritism. Um, earlier, he's just like, well, we'll just kind of count... We'll chalk Simeon up to kind of, oh well, I got eleven. I got ten others. It's okay. Um, he's the oldest. I've already got the grandkids. It's fine, you know, or what? Whatever the rationale is for for Jacob willing to kind of chalk up Simeon as a lost cause, um, and then you get you know uh, Reuben echoing that and giving up his two sons um, for his sake, and it's like no. Um, because you know the the place that is a warmer spot in parents' heart is not the kids but the grandkids. I right? don't give up your kid, your grandkids. Don't want to lose out on them. Um, and here even get maybe you'll get your older brother back. Um, and Benjamin. Find out what happens. So the men took the present and they took double the money with them and Benjamin. And they got up and went down to Egypt. And they stood before Joseph. Okay, so there they are, back where they started. So when Joseph saw Benjamin with them, and he said um, to the steward of his house, uh, or to the one who was over his house, um, bring them bring the men into the house and slaughter an animal and make ready uh, for these uh, will dine with me at noon. Oh. Hmm. Um, the man did as Joseph uh, said to him and, he, and the man went and, uh, and brought the men uh, into Joseph's house. Okay, so Joseph here, um, he's got a plan, and he's sort of working working his magic here, um, because you know why was Jacob? Why was this man very interested in his father, and if he had another brother? Um, like since we're outside the story, we get there's all sorts of hints, right, in the story of like oh. Like if you had only if they had only known like put the pieces together it would make sense, uh, but they don't quite get it. it. Takes a while, and there's even more breadcrumbs along the way. So the men were afraid because they were brought into Joseph's house, um, and they said, on account of the matter with the money, we have been which was replaced in our sacks that we are brought in, so that he may assault us. And fall upon us to make us servants and take our donkeys. <sighs> yes. So they went up to uh, the man, which was over Jacob's or Joseph's house, and they said to him uh, at the door of the house, and said, um, my Lord, we came down the first time uh, to buy food. And when we came to the lodging place, we opened our sacks and there was each man's money in the mouth of his sack, our money in full weight. 
So we have brought it again with us. We have brought other money with us to buy food. We do not know who put our money in our sacks. So they're, they're, they're trying to not get in trouble. He said, uh, peace be with you. Um, do not be afraid. It's all good. Your God and the God of your father gave to you uh, the treasure in your sacks for you. I received your money. And then he brought Simeon to them. Good deal. Okay. Um, money back, Simeon back. And when the man had brought the mint into Joseph's house ooh, and given water and they washed their feet um, and when he'd given oh, fodder to their donkeys, um, they prepared the present, the offering uh, for Joseph's coming at noon because they heard that they were going to eat there, eat bread there. So here they are, they're getting the present, the offering, they're trying to buy them off, which is kind of what any of us would do. Like, what's the price? We want our brother back, we need food. We don't want to lose the younger brother either. Um, so they wash their feet, which is the, just the ancient custom of the time because um, they're walking everywhere. Maybe riding horses, but either way, you're walking around in desert. So, you know, you need your feet washed. Um, yeah. When Joseph came home, uh, they brought into the house uh, to him the present, the offering, the mincha. Um, yeah, this is the same word for offering. Um, I mean, I, I mean, yeah. I guess you could translate it as present, um, but I'd want to then translate it as present when it's kind of an offering to the Lord. Um, it's sort of the same word. Um, they had with them and bowed down to him to the ground. Hmm. And here again, um, he inquired about their welfare and said, is it, is your father well? Is it shalom with your father? Is there peace? Is there wellness, wholeness? Um, the old man of whom you spoke, is he still alive? So here again, great concern about their father. Why is he so interested in their father? Um, so he's not like, how are you guys doing? But he really wants to talk to them about their father. Why would he want to do that? It's very interesting. I'm just trying to make the point that possibly if they weren't scared out of their minds, um, which is probably what they would have been, you know, the fear of being locked up again, being made servants, um, Simeon being arrested, this idea that he might get accused of stealing, he might take Benjamin away, um, beyond the fact that they've traveled to a distant country. Um, they might have been able to figure it out. Maybe. I don't know. Um, none of them seem to be those kind that try and guess, you know, the murder mystery before the end. See if they can figure it out. Or if you're, you know, reading that kind of book or watching that kind of TV show, always trying to figure out who the who done it. Um, maybe they're not trying to figure out who done it. Um, they said, "Your servant, our father, is well. He's still alive." And they bowed their heads and prostrated themselves. Right. Okay. And he lifted up his eyes and saw Benjamin, his brother, the son of his mother, and said. Is this your brother, the younger one, which you told me, which you said to me? And they, uh, God, uh, be gracious to you, my son. Then Joseph hurried out because his compassion grew warm for his brother, and he sought a place to weep. And he entered his chamber and wept there. So Joseph hasn't seen his brother in a long time. Um, again, we're not fully told how much food they get or how long it's been. Um, but we can, let's see, seven plus two, nine, maybe 10, 
years at the maybe well maybe 15 years at least low ball 15 um it's a long time especially when um you know that they think you're dead um so joseph right out for his companion he weeps um, so then he washes his face and comes out because he can't, you don't want him to know that. So he has to wash his face. So why does he have to wash his face? Because, well, he would have been dressed like an Egyptian. Um, I believe it was earlier um, in 42 when it talks about how Joseph spoke through an interpreter. Um, I think, or it's later. It's either coming or it's already happened. Uh, Joseph speaks through an interpreter. So Joseph is speaking Egyptian. And he's using another guy as an interpreter to speak uh, Hebrew or maybe whatever other language they would have used. Um, but definitely he, he's not speaking Hebrew with them. Um, and so he would have been dressed like an Egyptian. And, you know, we've seen those pictures with like the pharaohs and there's like the makeup or whatever. Um, and so if he cries, his mascara was running. Even though, you know, it doesn't have the same import as it does today. Um, thank you, Judy, for for fixing my mental block there. It was 42. Um, so his mascara would have been running. So he has to wash his face and probably put more makeup on, different makeup on again. Um, so that they don't know that, like, why would he rush out and weep? It's like, if an important guy is rushed out of a room, you know, maybe it's... Um, He's got something to attend to. Like, it wouldn't rouse suspicion. But if he came back and it's like, why is he not wearing makeup? Or with the makeup off, they might recognize him, right? So he gets control of himself and he says, serve the food. They served him by himself, right? Table by himself. And then by themselves. And the Egyptians who ate with him by themselves. Because Egyptians could not eat with Hebrews for it is an abomination to the Egyptians. Yeah, the Egyptians don't like the Hebrews. They just, they don't. Um, so the Egyptians would have had a um, superiority complex over them, much like um, uh, the Romans would have had towards other peoples they would have considered barbarians. Uh, same with the Greeks. Um, there's just, we're Egyptians, you're not. And especially because they're shepherds and they don't like shepherds. For what, um, And so... They eat by themselves. Um, and they sat before him. Uh, the firstborn, according to his birthright, and the younger, according to his youth. And the men looked, uh, were amazed uh, toward his, uh, his neighbor, his, his, the guy next to him. Re'ehu, like his, the guy next to him. Um, so there was assigned seating, not just with Joseph um, at the head table with an Egyptian table and a, and a Hebrew table. It was not sort of pick your spot. It was um, you sit here, then here, then here. Right. And they were seated in a row, oldest to youngest. And they're sort of looking at each other dumbfounded. Well, this is odd. Here again step back maybe think about it like how does he know this how does he know to seat us this way um not only that portions were taken from joseph's table uh to them from joseph's table so head table to the other tables um but benjamin's portion was five times as much as any of the others um and they drank and were merry with him Hmm. Portions of what were given to Benjamin? Of everything. Five times as much food. Five times as much wine. Um, whatever Benjamin got, he got five times as much. There's no comment about them figuring that out. It's a little bit... Again, we're seated oldest to youngest, and the youngest is getting all the stuff. Why? Hmm. So yeah, this is where it's at. So they are uh, 
and they drank and were merry with him. Uh, again, with whom? Um, with him. It's not. We're not told. Are they merry with Benjamin? Are they they can't be merry with Joseph because Joseph's at the other table. So they're all enjoying Benjamin's good fortune, right? As older brothers would be wanting to do, right? Blessed old younger uh, brother. Well, if he's having a good time, we're gonna have a good time with him, right? Well, he can't eat all his food. He can't drink all his wine, right? I mean, that's five times as much as we got. So they all have a good time, which is, again, this is all part of the plan, right? All part of Joseph's plan to, yeah, let them have a good time so that they're not um, clear-headed for the next part of the next day, possibly. We're not completely told that, but it would make sense kind of reading a little bit between the lines. So then what does he command? He gives a command. He commands the dude over his house, um, fill their sacks um, with food as much as they can eat and put each man's money in the mouth of his sack. Okay, like last time, and put my cup, the silver one, in the mouth of the sack of the youngest with his money for the grain. And he did just as Joseph said. As soon as the morning was light, the men were sent away with their donkeys. Okay. So they get up early. Um, at morning light. So it's, I mean, they got a long journey. So no matter how much you party, you still got to get up. Um, to, to ride your several week journey back to Canaan. <sighs> So now the plan is afoot. And Joseph is hatching the, the uh, pulling the trap here. They went out uh, from the city, but not very far. And Joseph said to the man over his house, arise, pursue after the men. Uh, and over, And when you overtake them, say to them, why... Um, several uh yes okay so several weeks yeah it's gonna take pot i mean they're traveling by loaded down donkeys from egypt to canaan through the desert um i mean you're not and you're gonna be traveling from oasis to oasis um you're not you're not taking the most direct route um so i mean my guess would be at least you know, how far can you get? Um, are they riding the donkeys? We're not really told that. Um, they lead the donkeys. They would have been pack animals, but maybe they're walking. Um, we're not. We're not fully told. But if kind of if we're considering that they're walking alongside the donkeys who are carrying the goods, um, well, then it's probably going to take them. I mean, a week, at least. I mean. Um, I mean, I recently went on vacation up to Montana from Kansas, and it was a, you know, it would have been a 13-hour drive, but that's traveling 60 miles, you know, 65 to 80 miles an hour. That's a 14-hour drive. Um, if you're walking that with with donkeys, it's going to take you a while. Um, that's all I'm saying. Maybe it's not like a month or anything, but it's going to take a while. Uh, is Simeon freed? Yeah, they freed Simeon... Um, Basically, right when they get to Joseph's house. So they show up and they try to give the money back uh, that they had found in their sacks. And then the servant brings out Simeon. So Simeon's out. They're all together. They party with, with Benjamin. Um, and then they're leaving. And they are... Um, so why have you... Um, Why have, so this is a weird, this is a weird turn of phrase. And it's, why have you tried to make whole with evil rather than good? So repaid isn't quite, it's it's not like a, 
it's not transactional that way. It's sort of like there things were complete, but you're you're trying to complete something with with evil rather than good. Um, this is echoes in the New Testament, right? Um, do not repay evil with evil, um, but repay evil with good. Um, is it not this which uh, my Lord drinks from it, and by this he practices divination? You have done evil um, by doing this. Hmm, interesting. Um, so, when he overtook them, he spoke to them these words. So, Joseph here is still playing the part. So, some people get hung up on this, like, so is Joseph practicing divination? Well, um, that's not what he's saying. He's just saying, like, this is what you're to tell him. Because, again, he doesn't, he doesn't want to spoil it now. So, he, he wants to play the part of the Egyptian. Um... So someone, so someone took this silver cup that he uses for divination. Why would you do that? And so there's this like double whammy of like, one, one, we wouldn't take. Two, why would we take a divination cup? How, how much partying did we do last night? <laughs> Is sort of the expectation, right? They said to him, why does my Lord speak in this way? According to these words, um, Far be it from your servants who would do according to who do this thing, like according to this this thing. Um, behold, the money that we found in the mouths of our sacks we brought back to you from the land of Canaan. How then could we steal silver or gold from your Lord's house? Okay, so don't you remember we tried to give the money back? And uh, excuse me, uh, why would we take something now? That's it's like it doesn't make sense. Why are we be we're, we're not guilty? And here comes the big, the big dummy thing. Whichever of your servants is found with it shall die. They're always about dying, aren't they? I mean, Reuben like tries to throw his sons under the bus, uh, and you're like, really? Real? This is like, this is some dark stuff. Like, well, we'll just kill us if it, if we've got it. Okay, and we also will be, and we'll be slaves. Like, kill us all. And we'll, we'll kill the servant and we'll all be, kill the guy who took it and we'll all be your slaves. A um, little hardcore. Little, little bold. Uh, he said, um, okay, like thus now according to your words, you know, like let it be as you say. Um, it's, it's a little bit like, I think this is sarcasm because otherwise it doesn't make any sense. I think he's being like, Oh, like uh, whatever you say, but really whoever we find it with, that one will be the servant and you all can go innocent, right? Like, okay, that's a little, that's a little much, um, and they quickly lowered the, like their sacks. Like, yeah, we're going to get this over with. We're done. They opened their sack. And he searched. Haha. See, this is also um, why they're seated oldest to youngest. So it's not just because Joseph would know, but it's so that the servant would know. Right? Don't you remember? Like they were seated oldest to youngest, put it in the youngest one's sack. So it's like, oh, I see what you're after here. And he searched, beginning with the oldest and ending with the youngest. And the cup was found in the sack of Benjamin. Oh, no. Oh, no. Then they tore their clothes. And every man loaded up his donkey and they returned to the city. <sighs> Tear their clothes. That's the sign of mourning. Um... So here we go. So Joseph here is is setting his brothers up. And he's he's testing them. Right? So they were 
um, he remembers that um, uh, they, they mistreated him. And again, it's not only because Joseph maybe possibly deserved it. I mean, he was sort of like telling these dreams where the obvious interpretation is, hey, you know what? I might be the second youngest, but you all are going to bow down to me. Really now. Really now. And he tattles on them. And he tattles on them. So, um, and he probably keeps doing this, right? This is his This is his deal. That's how he treats his brothers. Um, so they treat him. They want to get... So they go hardcore. They want it. They want him dead. And so the question, but it's not only that. It's it's who their mother was. So remember the 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 servant sons. They kind of hang out together. And then there's Leah's sons and there's Rachel's sons. So Joseph and Benjamin sort of hang out. All the servant sons they kind of hang out, and and Leah's sons hang out. But the the servant sons and Leah's sons may not get along, but they agree on one thing: they don't like Joseph possibly based on who his mother was, but definitely based on he's not, yeah, he's an annoying little brother. Um, so he's testing them. So I'm going to put my brother in trouble and see how they react. One, I'm going to put the oldest one in, in jail and see how they react. And then I'm going to put the youngest one in jail to see how they react. What are they going to do? Are they going to go, well, that's only Rachel's son. Who cares? We don't really like Benjamin anyway. Get rid of him. Not a problem. We'll, we'll do something else. That's what Joseph is doing. So what has happened in the intervening, you know, 15 years or 20 years or however long it is? It, do, it, it doesn't quite matter to the story. It's just, you know, counting things out. Joseph was in prison for two years. Um, and, uh, oh yeah, you're right. Uh, Mrs. Heather, um, you're right. That's right. And not only is Joseph like tattling on them and telling all these dreams about how they're going to bow down to him. Daddy likes him best. So what has changed? Oh, yeah. It, how long has it been? Well, Joseph was in prison two years. Um, then there's the seven years of plenty. So that's nine. Um, seven years of famine after that. And we're not told at what point in, in the famine this is. But you got to think, you know, at least a couple of years. So that's 10. And how long was he in Potiphar's charge? We don't know. You know, at least a couple of years. So, you know, we're pushing pushing a long time. Uh, you know, 10, 15 years, 15 years would be kind of probably rough, rough guess. Um, what's changed? Has anything changed? Are they different? Are they still going to mistreat, um, the youngest mistreat my brother? What are they going to do? How are they treating my father? Um, Joseph has concern there and he loves his brothers too. Um, as we'll see. But he's a little wary because that's how it is with all of us right um we're not any different than joseph when we think about people we haven't seen in a long time uh, we have trouble with that uh, maybe joseph is in the right maybe he's in the wrong here um but we can understand his motivation because the way people are that we, that we last encountered them is the way that we expect them to be if if and when we see them again so he's treating them exactly as they were 15 years previous. And we do that too. Um, and we get frustrated when people do it with us, right? We, we know that if we meet somebody, you know, we've been 10 years and, and there's lots that's the same about us, but we can grow. We, we're, we can be different people, different expectations. Um, but uh, more tomorrow on, on what does Joseph do with his brothers and i'm trying to go slow because i don't want a hurricane to have stolen the uh pastor borkhart's favorite line um 
I'm going to try and make and come by it honest. So um, hope this was kind of helpful for you to walk through what Joseph's planning and um, what his end goal is. This is all setting up a different end goal. Then, because Joseph, Joseph isn't trying to, to to punish. He doesn't want to do that. That would be his alien work. He's trying to have mercy, which would be his proper work. So that that's what Joseph is after. That's what the Lord's after. But more on that all tomorrow. Thank you. Same same time tomorrow, two o'clock. It may be me. It may be somebody else. I'm not. My schedule, it, it's all in flux. It's all in flux, thanks to Hurricane Laura. So with that, do keep uh, Pastor Vorkart, his family, uh, all in your prayers for the hurricane and also those all those affected in Louisiana because of it. And with that, have a good rest of your day.